this is Beck's critique. So I can see that there's a camera created, which is great. I'm gonna switch this view to the camera and then this will be my working space. Um, where is your character? You got something in there. Are you sure this is the right file? Like, okay, there's the, oh, hold on, Mesh probably, yeah, turn everything off. Show me polygons. Show me nerves, surfaces, and nerves, curves. Um, top, where's, okay, there's your top control. Where is your character though? Wow, what's going on here? Beck, is this uh, a problem that you're having on your computer as well? Or is it just my computer? Let me see what you're saying here. I'm covering that up a little bit too much. It just flies off into the stratosphere in the first part of the animation for some reason. Huh. That's really weird. Okay, so everything before 112 is bad, right? It's just, you can't even use that. Okay, so I'm gonna start, I'm gonna change this to 112. So I'm not looking at all that mess. Um, and then 112 to, let me see, let me add 120 to 112. I should be able to do it in my head, but I'm too lazy. So 232. So I'm gonna stop it over here at 232. So anything happening after 232, you need to um, uh, get rid of, because you only have 120 frames to animate. So 112 to 232. Um, the idea is to have them crunch, jump, uh, crouch, jump, and then jump again in a little circle like he's all playful. Okay. Let me see how that looks. Um, so I don't think you're quite ready for, for splining. Um, I see a lot of problems with the, uh, the spline tools are very, uh, your controls feel very, um, um, your animation feels very flowy, like, like he's swimming almost in water. And if he's in the air, he can get away with that. Or if he's actually swimming through water, he can get away with that. But on ground, he needs to move. Like there has to be some friction. He's got to stick to the ground sometimes. Um, but even before that, I need, we need to make a, Uh, a layer and call it tail cons layer. Oops, hold on. Okay. And then you're going to, and if you haven't created this, this layer yet, everyone needs to create this layer. So I hope everyone hears me because this is really important. Um, for a, a simple of a character as this is, it's important, but it's even that much more important for a character that's uh, that has a lot more controls, like a human character. So a lot of the things that I'm trying to prepare you guys, everything I'm trying to prepare you guys for is animating a human character. Um, the workflow is the same. You just have to um, get yourself into good habits so that you can very easily transition from a simple character to a a more difficult character that has a lot more rigged. We haven't even dealt with facial controls. Um, all right, so with all that selected, or okay, so now I have everything added to that layer. 
now I'm going to right click and say select objects. And that only shows the um, stuff that's been keyed. Uh, I think I'm done with the outliner, so it's going to give me a little bit more space. Um, if I just hit play again, oops, I'm going backwards, sorry. So right off the top, one thing I'll say is it feels overall the animation, aside from feeling really floaty and swimmy, it feels very slow, like it could be sped up. So that's going to give you a little bit more time, I think, to, to adjust, make adjustments. So I'm actually going to, first of all, select all this stuff and I'm going to turn it into stepped. And now I'm just looking for um, not so much timing, but the poses. And then the last pose is over here. Okay. So I'm tempted. I don't know if I, I'm going to, I'm going to experiment a little bit here. So um, I hit E, I'm sorry, I hit R on my keyboard and I'm holding down Alt and Shift and I'm going to left mouse drag, oh, let's see, left mouse. No, sorry, not Shift, just Alt. Where is it? Maybe it's, oh, I'm sorry, it's just Shift, not, not Alt, just Shift. So I'm going to leave frame 112 where it is. I'm going to hold down shift and with those all of the controls selected because I went right click and I said select objects um I'm going to compress the timing between this holding down shift um right mouse dang it I just did it yeah there we go holding down shift and then middle mouse dragging left and you can see it compresses it compressed everything the hard thing, the, the bad thing about this is you can see that it's not timed out very well at all. 228.86 something. I'm off of my whole numbers. So maybe that's not the best solution. Um, it'd probably be better to just go in here. I'm going to leave that first second. No, oh, it's not a second. I'm just going to leave that alone. Maybe I'll drag all this stuff, um, I don't know, to frame. Oh, shoot, I'm still in that command. I'm going to drag drag everything like six frames earlier or so. 42, so this is going to go to 36. And I, I really don't know if those are the right numbers for everything, but I just want to get the whole animation on, on screen. So 42, then 48. And then, and the other thing I'm noticing is not everything is keyed. I see there's movement, but it's just on the squash and stretch. But you can see that the tail doesn't, even though it, it moves, it moves because the body moves. It's, it's actually just kind of frozen in space, frozen and stuck to the body. It doesn't have its own animation. So after I move all the animation a little bit earlier, I'm going to go back and key everything. Uh, so I want, that's 48. Fifty-four, let's see. Uh, 54, 60, yeah. Anyways, I got everything on the, on screen at least now. Um, so you're in that 120 range, which is good now. Um, I still have everything selected. <clears throat> I'm going to hit S on every key and breakdown pose. And now I have uh, frames that I can go back and work on. Um, And if there's really no change here, that first pose, or there might not be, maybe I, I can't really justify this pose because it doesn't look like that was intentional. Um, well, uh, I'm sorry, I need to be reading your chat also. Uh, this is mostly 
me just mapping out my keys. I was going to retime once I had it laid out. Okay, good. So I'm going to delete 124. Um, there's a big change there, which is good. Another big change, another change. So maybe So right here, I don't see the body changing here between these two frames. And I'm just doing left less than and greater than on my keyboard to go back and forth. Um, I probably, so you can see from here to here, there's a slight change in the body. You need to have a slight change in the body here also. So I would just take the, the main control and maybe just rotate it a little bit so that there's a slight change every time. Okay, this is kind of what I was talking about. So you have a squash in anticipation, and then you don't really have a, this is a stretch, and I guess you can use that. We just have to be careful that the, um, if you're gonna stretch, if you're gonna use this squash as a stretch, you, you have to position the body um, to follow the path of the arc. So he goes up this high, um, so I would, I'm going to rotate him a little bit higher. So it looks like he's taking off and maybe even, I don't want him to go through the floor. So I'll probably need to, I'm actually going to switch from, uh, object mode. I'm going to go into the move tools and go to or modeling tools and go to world again. So that when I pull him up, he's not also, I don't have to push him. I'm only working with one axis here, not two. Uh, the tail also needs to come up. Maybe I'll just take the the root, the 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 base of the tail for now, and rotate that up. So it's well, it's still on the ground. Actually, I need to go to the right view. So rotate it a little bit more. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to rotate it enough to get it out of the ground. So I probably need to lift him up a little bit more. Anyways, so he gets to his default position shape with the squash and stretches is good. The tail at this point really should be um, following the the arc. It shouldn't be doing its own thing. So I'm going to go back to my uh, channel box and uh, zero out the tail. And I still have them all selected, so I'm going to hit E and then rotate down. So now the, the tail is just trailing his, his body, the path of his body. Doink. And then he gets there. So also, before he gets here, you, you're not going to go immediately into a squash. You're going to first contact with a stretch. So I'm going to add another frame. I'm going to select the objects. And I'm going to go one frame later and hit S again. So this is now my new, so 191 is my new squash, but 190 is going to become my new stretch. So in other words, I'm going to rotate him from where he came from. And I'm going to drag him up and his nose is just contacting the ground. Maybe I need to rotate him more. I'm not sure. I need to follow the arc. Um, also his tail is still following the path. So I'll zero this out again, and then I'll give it a little bit of rotation. Um, yeah. So if, if we play this now, let's see what it looks like. Yeah, I think one thing I didn't do right here. Um, this needs to be retimed because that squash and stretch, it's going to look best if there's just not more than two frames. Right, right now you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and you could. Um, actually, it's not even so much this. This this is anticipation, which is fine, but right here, this takes too long for him to get up. So I'm going to move. Well, let me see. Yeah, let me do this. I'm going to do the same thing I did over here. 
I'm going to steal a frame from his squash position. So, and actually he's almost, uh, I want to say we probably need to adjust this also. He, to squash, he's actually more flat here. I wouldn't position him so much down or something more like that. Anyways, um, select that. Okay, I need to hold, I'll, I selected everything. I'm going to hit S for the squash. And then, yeah. So the reason it's holding so long is because it's in stepped. Once we go to splining, this will be much faster. It, it's going to move through that faster. Um, and also through here, I like he's jumping around. He's happy. He's just, you know, happy squirrel or fox, or whatever. But as I go from frame to frame, you can see that there's, it's just, the tail is just stuck in that position. You need to find, for each key and breakdown pose, you need to find a new tail position. Yeah. Do you have any questions, Beck? Okay. Yeah, so go ahead and make those changes and, um, and while everyone is watching, I hope, or you know, you guys are working, but um, as I was talking to Beck, make sure that you really take to heart this concept. Squash, stretch, still in contact with the ground, up in the air, stretch, just contacting the ground, and then squash. That's the thing that I'm seeing the most issues with uh, on this assignment. People are missing that. And even, I, I almost wanna say that this, stretch probably isn't the best it, it feels too much like the the squash um so a true stretch would be you know he's back in his uh rotate i'm gonna rotate this back down for a second oh what happened i zeroed it out um why is it? Oh, I know. Well, no, I, I rotated the rotate X. Oh, I did rotate Z. Anyways, rotate X should be zero. And this is going to be contact in the ground. So I need to get him in contact with the ground. Um, but the important, the, the most important part is right here, this um, stretch, pulling this up. And I can lean him forward just a little bit. So he's following his stretch is following the, the direction he's going. So that feels more like a stretch. Even on the other end, it, it doesn't, it just doesn't feel quite as stretched. And it just feels like I'm just rotating him instead of squashing and stretching from here to here. But this this definitely feels more like a stretch back and forth because you can see the change happening happening in his in his torso he gets stretched anyways okay thank you Beck um let me go ahead and close this out and let's see where was I David are you ready you got something in there yeah I put the file in okay let me go to David's. And it's the one called Fox Animation MB. Should be. Okay. Make sure that you save it as versions. Like you don't have, and I typically try to keep the, the names as short as possible. Um, so we're going to be animating all semester. So you really don't need to name your file animation, but just put like underscore zero one, zero two, zero three as you're making improvements. And, um, Another th important thing is I, I, I encourage you guys to really experiment and play with and not to have to worry too much about breaking things. But the way you're going to do that safely is by um, versioning up. So if you really wanted to make a big change, but you're not sure if it's going to work, go ahead and save your file as is, as 01 or whatever, and then save it again, but version it up as 02. So you can mess up 02 and it's not going to, you're not going to lose your, your work that you did. Um, well, you got a whole bunch of layers. So make sure you name yeah, them. Yeah, most of them don't work, just the top one. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, if they don't work, then go ahead and just delete them. Because we, we want to be, especially when I have to go into your, um, your file, you want to have it really clean so I can, I don't have to try to figure out which one is, is the right. So that's your, and then you're going to name it too. I would just call it like uh, props or something, props layer. But the important one, I mean, that's an important one because that's, that means I, I'm not going to accidentally select your, your model. Oops, let's see, four, okay. Okay, um, and then is there a camera? Yeah, here's your camera. Click through selected. And here's our perspective. Um, okay, so the other, you need to make a new layer. And this is gonna be your, your character layer. So I'm gonna, this is the tail character. I'm gonna call it cons layer, oops. Save that, okay. And I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna start at frame one. And just like I did with Beck, I'm gonna select each one of these individually, right click and say, add selected object. And as I add them, they're being, they're, they disappear because, oh, hold on. Oh, three, okay, add selected. What is this then? I don't know what that is. I don't know why you have two controls. You don't want to animate two controls. Anyways, I'll just add it for now. I'm not sure what, why that is. I can see another one here. It looks like you have two controls here too. Tail O2. You might have, I, I don't know if you accidentally copied the, the tail controls. Um, we'll see what your animation looks like, but yeah, this is, I don't know what happened to the rig. Um, man, you have a whole bunch of these. Um... So you have two tail, two, you have two um, controls for the, the base of the tail. I think you just have one for the um, fourth joint, three, you have two there also, two, yeah, I'm not sure. Well, we'll see if we can clean this up or not, I'm not sure. I selected and then the squash and stretch. And finally, our main control. Uh oh, is there more than one main also? Oh, no. Hold on. I hate to say this. Uh, this rig is, it looks like this rig is broken because you have. Um, this, let me, let me turn everything on. I'm not sure how students, you're the second student I've seen that's done this. Um, let me just add, let me, before I spend any more time creating this, this rig, uh, this control button or this all button. Let me see how it's working for you. Well, you definitely got a lot of work on it. Um, I think some of the, the, there's some places where it's really jittery. And I wanna say that that's because you have multiple controls I'm not really sure, I'm just guessing. Cause it's gonna be, oh gosh. 
me think how to fix this. So you see what the problem is? You have this, um, this group here that has some of the controls. And then you have the original. Well, actually this isn't even the original. It's called tail 01. And then I wonder if maybe you accidentally imported it twice or yeah, this group. Not sure, but you don't want to be animating. Let me actually see which one works. If I pull this one up, that doesn't even affect the character. Okay, maybe that's part of the solution. And that's in the group folder. So here's another control. Does that do anything? That doesn't do anything. Okay, good. What about that doesn't do anything? Oh, I can't move that one though. Yeah, these controls just like appeared out of nowhere, but because they weren't changing anything. Yeah, he and... just left them. Well, I wonder if maybe uh, this is kind of risky, but I wonder if we could just delete this. Um, well, let me just see what happens if I delete it. I'm just trying to get to a point where I can get to helping you with your actual animation. <laughs> So that one's working. That one's working. Um, that one's working. Okay, that one doesn't do anything. That one works. Um, that one works. And this one doesn't work. Okay. This one does work. So you're going to have to kind of go through what I just, what I'm doing, go through and just move, wiggle them a little bit. And if they don't work, you're, you're it looks like you're pretty safe to just delete them. I don't know why they duplicated or whatever, but uh, just delete them. Um, and then you should have a, a rig that you can cleanly work with. So you're just looking at these controls. Um, so you're in spline. Let me see how your spline worked out. I just put like a basic kind of spline in at the moment that I'm gonna edit and fix some of the things. Yeah, for for being in spline, it feels really jittery. So we need to we need to approach the spline much more carefully, because um, you. This is a lot of work to, to have to clean up. What you want to do is, um, and did you just make a marquee around all of your controls and hit spline? No, no. I I went through like, I went through the like transform Y on the main control, and then see what I like and change that kind of thing individually. Uh, yeah, that's how you should do it. That's um, I'm not sure why it looks so. I just I don't think though. I went through all of the the ones yet yeah what i would recommend is um like just get like just take a couple frames at a time like from one to ten he's coming into the scene or one to eleven whatever um and just pick one control i'm just going to pick the translate z in fact he keeps moving through he's moving through all this but I think frame 20 is where you actually want him to stop. So if you're just focusing on the, the Z value for that one control, um, you don't, you, you'll find that you don't need these other positions anymore. So he's going to be there. Oh, he's still moving. So you don't really want him gradually moving forward. This is really where he, he, should, he should be in one position, just anticipating and then squashing and, and then jumping up. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna take this value at 14 and delete it and take this value at 20 and switch it to 14. So now from 14 to the time he jumps, he's in the same um, position on the ground, 
but when he jumps, he doesn't, you don't want him to be, he, he should be moving forward, but because of that position is being held. Um, in other words, you just, you need to find your stretch. So it, I'm going to say he squashed and then it's 24. His, his, he needs to be stretched. So I'm going to select all of them. And this is going to be, you might, yeah, you do have a lot of stuff already keyed there. I just want to make sure I'm going to hit S. And I, yeah, I keyed, everything's keyed there. I'm going to go back to the first position that I was talking about and just work on this translate Z for a second. Um, so from one to 14, I'm going to delete the stuff between those two. And then 14, I'm actually going to, or is it 20? No, 14. Yeah, I'm going to use the um, flat tangent. And he, oh, actually, before I do that, I thought I keyed, let me select everything again. Um, so he stretches it. Okay, what I didn't do, I keyed everything at 24, but I didn't key everything at 23. So I'm going to hit S at 23. And now I'm going to go back to just the main control, wherever that's at right here. And I'm just looking at translate Z again. And I keyed it at 23, but it didn't key. Um, I wonder if maybe it wasn't correctly added to the, yeah, okay. So um, I'm turning off my control that I made. And you can see that the, the tail controls and the head control turn off, but I added that other control, the other main control, that imposter, instead of this one. So when I turn this off and on, you can see that it doesn't show up. So now that I have it selected, I'm going to turn this off and say add selected object, and now it turns off. So now when I say select objects, now it will show me um, 23. And you can also see that on there's a red line here that doesn't have a, a um, a dot on it. And there's a green line here. There's probably a blue line. Yep, there's a couple blue lines here. So um, that's from the main control, I'm pretty sure. So with everything selected, let me turn it back on. I'm going to right click and say select objects. And then I'm going to hit S to key. And now everything's actually keyed. So now if I go back to the um, translate Z for just the main, now I can see that there is a key there and that's what I need to work through. So back and forth from here, there's no change from 14 to 20 and he slides in. And what I was telling most of my students this morning, especially is this, this character doesn't have any feet. So he only, we have to think of his believable modes of movement. And before I say anything else, I need to, make a, a point also that you don't have a, a safety frame. Um, so before you start, you have, you, you, pos you started your pose at one, which is good. I can see the tail is not a default, but before you get to that, everyone needs to go to zero in case the rig breaks and you have a safety frame to go back and work from. So to do that, everything needs to be zeroed out. I have this, um, my main control here, I'm gonna zero these out um, and I'm at frame zero. And I hit F. Okay, so he's, at, he's over here. I'm gonna grab the um, squash tool and hit zero and all the tail controls and zero those out. Okay, so that's my safety frame. And even with that done, I can see that not everything was keyed at one either. So I'm gonna hit S. Okay, so now that my safety frame is created um, and it's at zero, is it? A, actually, it's not a zero, zero, zero. Um, uh, anyways. It should be at the or point of origin, and I guess these are just these should also be zeros. Yeah. So there's your point of origin. 
Okay, so now your safety frame is set. But let me undo that for a second. I'm going to go to frame one. I'm going to hit S at frame one with this thing keyed. And is it going to let me? I don't know. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just not animating this this master control anyways, that's just bringing it into the file. But um, ideally it should be keyed at the point of origin at zero, zero, zero. So when you need to bring your character back, if anything breaks, you can bring it back to the origin point and fix stuff. Um, you don't wanna fix stuff way out here where it has X, Y, and Z values for translation. Um, anyways, um, so now that I've, made my safety frame. I'm going to change these back to one. So I'm not going to look at zero anymore. I'm not going to play blast it. I'm just going from one, starting at one. Okay. Anyways, my point that I was trying to make was this character doesn't have legs. So we have to really think about how he can move this believable. He can either hop like a, like a bouncing ball uh, in and out of a, a ball bounce. He can also slither like a snake, or he can kind of scoot where he rolls a little bit and translates at the same time. Uh, I, I think for what you guys have done, probably the, the easiest way to move him is um, uh, uh, hopping where he's squashing and stretching. Um, And your, so yours is an exception in that you show him running into the scene off screen. He comes off screen and he's, he's zooming, he's zipping in here. So we don't know how he built up his momentum to get there. Maybe he did a whole bunch of hops and then he, he slides to a stop. So in saying that, um, one thing that I would add because he's, he's running in so fast is um, have him skid to where as he's as he's coming in here, he's actually also he's going to roll back and forward like this, and then come back down um, to a you know skidding to a stop, and then you can have him hop up because he doesn't have legs to to stop himself. So we have to show that he's skidding. So let me let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Um, Rotate X, he comes in. Um, I'm actually gonna start him a little bit sooner, maybe at frame 10, I'm gonna hit S. And at 12, I'm gonna roll him forward. And then just before he hops, maybe at 19 or so, I'll get him back down. So he's gonna go back to zero here. So I'm just gonna play with this idea a little bit. I'm gonna flatten this one. Actually, no, I need to, I'll, I'll play with it. Maybe I'll, I'll go back and forth and change these a little bit. Um, maybe I need one more frame here and then I'll flat, oh, these are the same. I want these to be the same. Let me delete this and step it for a second. Let me see how many frames, one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I'm just gonna use one frame and hit S. And now I'm gonna flatten these two with a flat tangent. Um, yeah, in fact, I'm gonna have him just ease into that. He's gonna flat tangent out of this. Um, maybe actually he should flat tangent out of this one too, or into it first. Actually, this needs to happen a little bit sooner because he's, he's already, he's he's, rotating before he starts to skid. So I'm gonna make this happen a little bit sooner and see if I can time it better. He skids and then comes, let's see. Well, I might need to maybe have, have this happen sooner. I'm not sure. So he gets down. Okay, let me move this this way. Actually, what I need to do is have the translate Z showing as well as 
Oh, that's what it is. It translate Z is he's skidding. Yeah, let me flatten this. I thought I already flattened it. Maybe I undid some stuff. I'm not sure. Um, no, he, he he's still sliding through there. Uh, let me just delete this. There we go. That's more what I was looking for. That's what I was trying to do. I just had an extra key there that I didn't want. So he slides in and he starts to skid to a stop. And then he hops up there. Um, and you have a lot of frames. This, okay, this is the jump. So like I was saying before, if this is our stretch position, he needs to leave the ground with his body or before he leaves the ground, his body is still stretched. His, his, the, his, what would be his foot or down here at the bottom that still needs to be touching the ground before he leaves. It's like that fox that uh, we were watching over and over again. He, he, he's all compact and squashed, anticipating the jump up in the air. And then he jumps and there's a, there's a frame in the video where his whole body is in this nice, big, long stretch position. And then his feet are stretched all his legs are still stretched, but his feet are still touching the ground. That's a critical um, pose for every character who's going to be jumping. He needs to be still touching the ground. So to create that, I'm going to say select objects. Um, I'm actually going to turn these into flat or uh, step for a second. And I'm going to take the translate Y. I'm going to work with just translate Y for a second. So I'm going to keep this on the ground. So I'm going to delete this frame and then hit S. And I'm going to point him a little bit more in the direction he's going. And I don't think, yeah, he's still on the ground. Okay, so now he's on the ground. And then I would have him linear tangent out of that. So that's that's more what we're looking for. Squash, stretch, and the stretch, there's a lot of squash. He's really flat. So maybe either he's too flat or he's not stretched enough. But the squash and stretch should um, match each other. And that's as far as I can stretch him. So the squash probably is too much. I would back up a little bit on, on the squash. So he, he stretches out of that. <clears throat> he lands on the, on the sofa and then he runs around. I mean, actually, I'm, I'm, I should mostly be looking at the main control. Yeah, because you're almost animating. This really feels almost like straight ahead animation. Um, and if you're coming from a traditional back, traditional animation background, that kind of makes sense. But um, I'll make sure he doesn't get buried in the in the sofa too much. So you just pull him back out here. Um, but with these spline tools, to make them really effective for you, you really want to be working pose to pose. And that's really where you find your keys your key storytelling poses, and then you add breakdowns to make those uh, transitions. And then between those, instead of just um, splining, well, in instead of going frame by frame, you know, straight ahead animation, what you want to do is use, use these tools like I've been using to get to, um, uh, so you, you don't actually have to frame by frame, find a new position. You can use the arcs that Maya gives you to, to find the next pose. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I just, since between like the last two classes, uh, you mm -hmm. have to add more uh, keys and I possibly just added a bit too many keys when it comes to that. Yeah, I would just go through because I'm not sure which ones are your I mean, you, you can go through and just figure out which ones are your key and your key storytelling poses. Um, but if. Yeah, just just go back through it and maybe delete some of them that aren't. Because um, there, there's so much uh, jittering, it's because you have so many keys and the whole idea of these spline tools is this going to avoid a lot of that. But mm -hmm. you can see that a lot of it is still spline, but it still feels very jittery. Um, 
So you should get to really fluid animation. And if, if you need for me to, if you want to meet after class, uh, so we can really kind of start from your, your blocking poses um, and then slowly get you into the spline tools, I think that might be a better solution than, than uh, having to work from this file because there's, there's so much to clean up you're better off backtracking with a, a file that that has just your breakdown poses and your key yeah. poses. Yeah. All right. So just okay. shoot me an email, and we'll uh, or maybe after uh, later in this class. I'm not sure, but just uh, let me know what your schedule is like, and we can schedule a time to meet. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, that was Dave, and then Juliana. Do you have stuff, your latest uh, Maya file in the Google Drive? Yeah, so that's the story. I went to <laughs> upload it uh -huh. and um, it's not there. It's lost. Like I went on my file and flash drive, but uh -huh. I don't have my most recent file. I have like my old ones, but I scrapped all of it because it was wrong. So did you um, did you check the default folder? Maybe you accidentally saved it to the wrong folder. Um, I can quickly look. But... Yeah, go ahead and check on that and get back with me. Let me know if you find it in there. All right, so while Juliana is doing that, um, so going back to those who did um, get a critique on Tuesday, um, is anyone ready to or have questions that I could help them with? Uh, for the graph editor or their spline tools? Does anyone need me to go through? Anyone ready for me to answer their questions there? Oh, by the way, Reggie, um, did you get a critique last class? I did not. Okay, let's, okay, yeah, let me, um, And do you have your latest stuff uploaded? I have the latest, the latest like in the file. Yeah, I do, and I do have like a video of that, but it's more or less just for me to like see what it looks like at the moment. Yeah, but you have a Maya file in the in the Google Drive. Yes. Okay. Good. Let's go ahead and take a look at your stuff then. And guys, by the way, I need to um, remind, I had to remind my morning class, they have a really tough time. I guess 8.30 is really early for them. Maybe they're staying up too late. But I have a, a small handful of students that are more than 15 minutes late regularly. And I have to remind you, you need to check the syllabus. But um, if you're more than like, I'm going to say 15 minutes late, you're, you're actually counted absent. And if you get like five absences, I don't know if it's three or five absences, I need to check myself, but your grade drops a whole letter grade every time you get five absences or whatever. So make sure you're on time. If you're just a couple minutes late, I don't mind. I understand you guys are, you know, getting stuff, getting your Zoom meeting set up and all that stuff, but you can't consistently be 15 minutes late because you're missing way too much, uh, especially if I'm doing a lecture class. Um, so make sure that you guys are as much as possible on time. And of course, if there's an extenuating circumstance where you got stuck in traffic or I don't know, um, let me know ahead of time. You know, shoot me an e a text or an email and let me know that I'm running a little bit late. I was commuting because I was teaching up at, at CCS and then I was commuting all the way. I don't know if you guys know where Bowling Green, Ohio is, but um, it's like an hour and a half away. <laughs> And I was I was teaching at CCS, and then I was trying to run, you know, drive quickly an hour and a half to get to my Monday evening class by six. And I was, I kept getting late. I, I couldn't leave early enough, and I, I just had to. I started texting my professor to let him know I'm stuck in traffic. Traffic's bad between here and uh, Detroit, so just to let you know I'm going to get there as soon as I can. But, and even with that, I was still usually only 15 minutes late. But. Um, let me know and I'll, I'll be willing to work with you. But if you're just constantly late, that's um, that's going to be a serious problem for you because it's, it's really going to start to affect your grade. And more important than the grade, you're really missing out on, on the stuff we're talking about, which means that I'm most likely having to repeat myself a whole bunch. 
Um, you see camera. Did you create a camera? It doesn't look like you have a camera created. I created a camera, but for whatever reason, it won't show up on the, uh, what's the name? On the, um, the, the gra like the whole, the space. Um, like it would, it would just show like a blank object or I would look on the, it, on the side view, it would be there. But then when I look on the perspective view, it's not there at all. Hmm. All right, well, I'm gonna go to create and let's see if it does, the, maybe there's some issue with your Maya file. If I hit camera, so you don't get this this little symbol, this little. No, I didn't get that when I was at home doing it. That's weird. All right, well, maybe it's fixed now, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna drag this camera out. Oh, what happened? There we go. What in the world? That was weird. I don't know what's going on. Anyways, I'm gonna look through selected here. So we're always animating to a created camera. And I'm just gonna scroll through, he jumps up. He's off screen, so I need to pull back until I can see him. That looks like it's at the top of the arc, maybe a little bit further back. And then he crashes, okay. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna say that's good for now. I'm gonna lock it. Um, and I can see at frame zero, I'm at frame zero, which is our safety frame, and you have your character posed out there. So that's a little worrisome for me also. I'm gonna say selected objects. Um, so just remember, and this is again, a note to everybody, at zero, everything is at its default position. And then your animation pose, your first animation pose actually starts at one. Even though we key everything at zero, you're keying it at the default position. You're keying it again at one, but then you take it out of the default position to find your first pose. Um, so make sure that's everybody gets in that habit of creating that safety frame um, because uh, there's there's already been plenty of examples this semester, I'm sorry, this assignment of the rig breaking on people. Um, and to fix it, you need that safety frame. Uh, and it also looks like you have some of the issues that Dave was dealing with. Yeah, I you have extra joints. That. So that one doesn't work. I'm going to delete that one. This one does work. I'm going to keep it. That one works. I'm not sure why, and it's not everybody, but I'm not sure why some students rigs are duplicating it seems like it's mostly the tail but i think it was just that one yeah that's the only one i've been ever i've been able to spot okay yeah i think you're safe if you just select it and delete it um yeah okay let's go back select objects so i'm gonna with this new camera okay this is my camera so i'm gonna turn off my turn everything off polygons and nerve sur surfaces. So he's gonna, okay, I don't wanna see zero anymore. So I'm gonna change this back to one after I've set my safety frame. Um, uh, okay, hit play. Okay, so he has kind of a cat-like tail whipping back and forth, which is kind of pretty nice. Um, Explain what happens to the tail after that. Uh, I'm still animating the tail and stuff like that for the poses because mm. I basically started over. Oh. Uh, and so I'm like still animating the tail and then all that stuff. Okay. I'm just, should, I should have everything done for like Tuesday. Okay. Just, I had this, I'm, everything's still kind of, I'm still working everything out slowly yeah. but surely. And like I said earlier in class, um, having, um, so you're, you're still finding new poses and you're already in spline. Uh, yeah, so, I did that because I wanted to see how it would look in a, like how it would look once uh, I'm like done. Cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back in and spline in, place, in the places that I think need to be spline. Cause I'm just kind of going by feel rather than like, I get like yeah, just kind of going by feel when it comes to like how
how the animation looks. And is your character, is he jumping into the snow? Is that why he's uh, yeah. breaking through the ground? Yeah. Okay. Again, so if, like, yeah, if you're going to have um, like that snow reference video, um, then you do need to create a ground plane and a little donut, like a torus that, that displaces as his snow hits, his face hits the snow. Um, Cause otherwise- yeah, I was gonna work um, on all that once I got done with the main animation, cause that was okay. the most important bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, so going back to the tail, what you wanna do, and you, you really, like I was saying earlier, you really wanna get used to working in pose to pose in stepped. Um, this is a simple character, but as the characters get more sophisticated with a lot more rigging, you're really going to need to, you're going to re rely much more on your, your blocking where you have um, your character, you know, you find all the, 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 the good pose for every joint on, for all the key storytelling poses, and then you move on to the next one. And then you, you know, cause right now you have, it seems like you have the tail figured out. But even here on the beginning, the the there's no emotion. The, the these controls are basically set to default. Yeah, again, so I'm taking it a step at a time, working with one yeah. piece at a time, so that I'm not overworking myself, or so I'm not messing something up, and yeah. I gotta go do a bajillion different things. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's what I'm saying. Your your working method. I'm not sure that that's the most effective way to do this with the spline tools. You're going to find that you 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 find use your key poses to um, you know locate your key poses. I'm going to say one is a key pose. Um, I don't. Know, I'll pick one of these because there's a whole bunch of them. I'll just pick that one for now. So with 14, I need to find a new pose, not just for the tail, but also for the body. Is it? kind of squashing down a little bit or stretching. Um, and don't focus on just the tail, getting the tail all clean the whole way through. Just focus more on getting your key poses clean. And then it's, it's, it's just gonna be a lot easier to work. This is the way you're working is, um, it, it's just really confusing because you can see that the tail is just not doing anything right now. It's just stuck. And that's a really easy place to just go through and select the tail controls and get get them in the right shape already. So I'm just gonna zero these out and then rotate them down. And now now it's it's making sense to me. Um, except that it's really flipping around, which makes me worry that it's um, from this pose to this pose, it should just be a, a clean transition. Um, but let me see if I key that and I'm gonna flatten these tangents. I don't know if that makes it any better. No, there's something really going on wrong with the tail if it's flipping around like that. I think so, maybe I, I noticed it a little earlier that the for whatever reason, the uh, X axis was on its side when I was uh, animating. I was going to look into fixing that when I had the chance. But uh, I'm not exactly sure why it uh, decided to do that. Okay, I, I think I'm starting to understand. I, I'm selecting the base of the tail. Mm -hmm. And you can see the rotate X is negative 788. So 360 is in either direction, negative or positive. 360 is a complete rotation. So right. times two, that's a lot closer to 788. So you flipped it twice. Uh, if I select the rotate X, yeah, you can see up here mm -hmm. at your zero value. Oh, where is it? That's zero. And then from there, it just very quickly even at frame one, you're already at, at frame one, you're already at negative 340. Um, I'm not sure why that occurred. Yeah, I, I would just trying to take yeah. all these values and then just drag them up until it gets close to where it should be. And probably these yeah. two, just grab these, oops, sorry, not that. I just make a marquee around the stuff that's really extreme and then just drag it up. 
and I'm not sure where it's going to be, but that's probably a lot closer. Yeah, so keep track of these numbers, these rotations. If they go past 360, um, that means the tail is just doing a, a multiple flips on itself. Um, yeah. So yeah, just be be, be watchful of, of these numbers. This I have the next one too. And you can see that one's also at negative 765. And probably this one, the same thing. Yep, 774. And then uh, that one's actually not bad. That one's close to, oh, let me see at the end though. Yeah, that, that's still not bad. Yeah, so there's a lot of cleanup, um, but just, just take my advice. Working in pose to pose is gonna make animation for you in the future with, with these characters, human characters, so much easier. If, you, if you're working straight ahead with all these, you're really gonna, you're, you're, you're gonna, those, those tools are gonna be fighting you instead of helping you. And you can get this done so much faster with, with pose to pose. And sometimes, especially like in-betweens, you can do straight ahead with some of the in-betweens, but where you're really setting out the blocking keys and breakdowns, it's just gonna be so much easier for you if you're using the spline tools to find your new positions. All right, thank you, Reggie. Let's see. Who was I talking to before Reggie? Um, I don't remember. Was it Jocelyn? No, it was Gi Juliana, wasn't it? I think it was Juliana. Juliana, did you find your um, anything in the in the default folder? Or? So I found my file, but it changed like the frames per second. So it's not correct in 24 frames. I don't know if you want it still or. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I want to see, I want to see any progress that you've made. Um, okay. So did you already share that in the, in the Google drive? I was going to ask, I'll put it back in. Okay. Um, five, start at four. All right, why don't we take a 10 minute break while that's getting set up and um, I'll be back. So I have 512. So let's say at 522, I'll be back. Oh, and I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop the video. Let's see, stop recording. I'm gonna pop. Okay. So this is Juliana's critique. I'm looking for layers, which I don't see any, which is concerning. Also, I'm looking for a camera. I see that's named camera, which is good. I'm gonna turn this into perspective and it's all screwed up. I don't know why it does that. And I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but a simple fix is just hitting four for wireframe and then six, and it seems to put it, correctly i don't know why but anyways i'm gonna turn everything off in the camera view turn on polygons nerve surfaces okay and the camera's locked which is great yeah good so um i can't really select the controls until i have a an all button actually let me let me I need to go to the very beginning first. So going back, I'm on frame zero and I'm seeing the same problem a couple of times. This is like the third time I've seen this. Um, you have to make sure to create the all button. I'm sorry, you have to make sure to key the character at zero in default. And then you key it again at one. So I'm gonna save what you've done at one, but um, we need to, key it at zero. Okay, so you have that posed out. You do have something at zero. Actually, it's not at zero, it's 0.24. Um, let me see. Yeah, so you wanna also be careful about these in-between 
whole number frames. You don't want to you don't want to key on those. 0.24 anything. And I wish Maya wouldn't let you do this, but um, you want to delete everything that's not on a whole number or if not necessarily delete it, but you want to move it to a whole number and then um, just you want clean animation. Um, so that's going to make it a lot cleaner. OK, so the first thing is to set these all to zeros. And these also. OK, so there's my safety frame. There's my first. OK, so now that I've done that, set this back to one. And then the next thing I need to do is create an all button. I create an, I should call it an all layer. Name it. All cons layer or tail cons layer. And then turn it off. So as I select these, they turn off as they're added. That one's added. Added. Okay, so they're all turned on. Um, now I'm going to right click and say select objects. And if it's not clear, I hope it's I, I, I can make this as clear as possible for everybody. This layer um, makes it possible for me to select all of these controls that you're seeing here. Before I used to go, I used to have my students go down here to the script editor. And they would select them individually and clear out the script and then middle mouse drag it to one of these um, custom uh, tabs. I don't remember where it is anymore. Custom, yeah. It's a lot more work because, and it, especially when you have, when you have a, a full character, like a human character. But um, the other thing is it's not as reliable. I was just actually recently shown how to do this and it's it makes, it makes it so much easier for the student to, to create it and use it. Um, so I, it's really important that you guys get used to using an all button. So select objects and you can see everything turned on. Okay, so now that I have everything, I see there's a lot of splining. Let's see how, how that's working. Let me go to the camera view actually. Yeah, camera view. I'm gonna hit play. Yeah, um, the tail seems, there's some nice arcs. It seems to be following, the big jump, it doesn't follow the arc as well. Some of these smaller jumps seems to be working pretty nicely. Um, what can, I guess my priority would be to fix the body. The, the body is following the arcs, but it's not squashing and stretching properly. So if we go back to the main control, Um, actually, well, I'll need this also. I'm going to select the main control and the squash and stretch at the same time. So he's squashing. Oh, another thing you want to be careful about is make sure that your character is in contact with the ground. Let me actually go to the side view and see if he's, okay, there's your ground plane. I think, well, almost. He's actually floating a little bit. And then let's see the tail. So, yeah, now he's going too deep into the ground. And then he jumps up and he's intentionally going through the ground because he's um, burying himself in the snow. Um, and this is in this. Tell me if this is your story. Remind me, did he he gets stuck and he can't pull himself out and he kind of just gives up there at the end. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, these arcs are nice. Just make sure that the 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 fox um, 
contacts the ground when he's hopping around. Uh, oh, he's kind of tilted also. I don't know if that's an issue or not, but um, let me go to the translate wise for a second, see if maybe it's just a simple fix. Oh, you know what? It's not even keyed. That's weird. So you do have it keyed at, it looks like it won, but then translate Y isn't keyed again. So it makes me wonder how he's moving in translate Y. Oh yeah, this is the danger. Okay. So you can see this main control, the master control, you keyed that instead. That's going up and down. And like I said before, you don't, once you bring the character into the scene, you don't use that anymore. You just use that to import your character, maybe position him for your camera, and then you don't use it. And instead of using that to translate and rotate your, your character around, you, you use the, the main control. Um, I mean, you've done a lot of work and it seems to be working. So I guess you don't have to go back through and start from scratch on it, but you do want to fix where at least, let me select translate wise. Um, even through here. Yeah, okay, so here, uh, oh, that's at frame zero. At frame one, for some reason, he's already left the ground. Um, and now you're, you're kind of, you can see that the translate Y is zero. So it's here. It's in the main control translate Y and that's supposed to be zero. So you don't want to, that's that's why you want to just not use the, the master control anymore after you've positioned your character because you don't want to have to double animate for the same position. So I'm also going to put this on a layer so um, I don't accidentally select it as well as this. Add that to that layer and I'm going to restrict it so I can't select them anymore. Okay. Um, it might be easier to work, stay in the right view. So I'm going to select this. He's touching the ground. Ah, that's what's so weird. He's squashing. Normally when he squashes, you don't, the character should stay connected to the ground. Is there a translate Y still? I don't see a translate Y. Shear, what else is there? Did you, oh, it's a scale Y? I don't even know how you do that. What? Yeah, this is really confusing to me because you shouldn't be able to scale. That's what this is for. You scale, so squash and stretch is just a scale, but somehow your rig is broken so that you're scaling it. You shouldn't have access. You see over here in the channel box. Um, oh, shoot. Pause recording. Yeah, I think I recording okay i just want to make sure i'm recording um in the channel box there's only translates and rotates there's no scales because this this character was rigged so that you can't scale it um from the main control only um translates and rotates so i'm not sure how that was broken but you don't want to use those scale values scale y scale z yeah even scale z is used um, what happens if I drag these up? Nothing changes. Okay. Um, translate Y, scale Y. That first value is should be one if it's at a default position. I don't I can't even land on that frame. Uh, okay, I'm gonna drag this back to an actual 
whole number. Yeah, and you can see these, for some reason, these aren't on whole numbers. This is 11.04. Just change that number to 11. You want to make sure you're animate on, animating on whole numbers. If it doesn't change, I don't know why it won't change there. Let me see. There we go, that changed. Um, this is, what is this? I can't even land on it. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of cleanup. There, for the most part, the animation, other than that, it, feel, it does feel swimmy. Um, that needs to be fixed. But the rig itself, this is gonna be hard to clean up. I want to say you're probably better off deleting anything that you've done on this scale. Why? And then put the right scale or use the, the, the squash and stretch for your scale. Um, let me see what happens if I zero this out. Okay, so you don't need to, you, you can keep the translate Z, but the scales, that should be zeroed out. Oh, those are rotates. Um, no, that should be good. It's just a scale. Okay, so I'm just going to delete all this stuff. And anything in the scale values, I'm just going to delete them because you, you shouldn't be scaling in the, the main control. I don't even know how that was accessed. I don't know what that is either. So we can keep these. And then let's see what that looks like now with, without those scale values. So it's probably just not squashing and stretching anymore. Yeah, so just instead of using the main control to squash and stretch, this is the control that you need to squash and stretch. So I'd go back through and use that instead. Um, and like I've been saying, there's issues with the squash and stretch anyways. When he leaves the ground, oh, let me just back up. Well, I don't want to do that because it's, it's, it's animated on the main control. So I'll just show you with, with his new squash and stretch. Um, let's say it, he leaves at frame, this big jump here, I'm actually going to turn that into my stretch. Um, but, so I need to squash him down first and maybe rotate him. I'll make this go back to zero. Actually, maybe all three of these. So he squashed there. The next frame, I'm going to steal from my translate Y also. Oh, that's not keyed there. Um, all right. I'll just move it one frame later. Okay, and I key it at 13. Oh, it's because this is, oh gosh, I'm so lost with this rig. You're animating the main control, or the, the master control. Uh, well, you should be able to make the change that I'm trying to make with the master control. Um, just, yeah. Translate Y. 14, 13, okay, key it there. Just move it. If I can't key it, I'm just gonna drag it from 10 to 13. So 14, I'm actually gonna change that value to the same as 13. So it's a zero. So I'm gonna take this to 13, this value. And then if you want to, you can, you can keep it as a linear tangent so it pops up. And then at the top, when it gets to the top of the crest, yeah, it's a flat tangent. And then when it gets down again, it should be another linear tangent. Um, but this rotation, we want to get rid of that rotation. And then we want to stretch it again, like I was saying before, we want to stretch it in the, use a squash and stretch to stretch it. And we got to find where it goes back and forth between squash and stretch. So 
19 is our the top of our crest. So I'm going to key it there. So really what we need to do is find our um, key positions. This is not a key position. Oh, this is a key position, but it's not. It needs to go back to default. That's not even working. Oh, that's the main control. Yeah. Uh, where's our squash and stretch? That one. Okay, so this goes back to zero. And then from here to here, I'll, I'll use this as a flat tangent. And this is a, oh, let's see, that should work. Yeah, so just make sure that you're cleaning up the main controls values. Um, so it doesn't feel like it's swimming. There's just, and you can see that the graph editor is just, like I was working on this, so that's a different, I'm not talking about that. But from here, and you can keep some of this where the arc is nice, but as it's moving on the ground, it shouldn't be so so swimmy. He's not he's not floating on the water. He's he should be repositioning himself. So basically, from twenty four to the time he leaves thirty, he should be in one position. He should stay. The translate Z value should be the same. So from twenty eight to thirty that value should be the same. And this is really important in a walk cycle. As your character plants his foot, that foot has to stay in the same place um, until it leaves the ground. It's not gonna be sliding on the ground. There we go. And I'll make these flat. So he gets there, he kind of repositions himself and then jumps up again. Yeah, and there's there's a lot of issues with um, translate Y where he's he's if he's contacting the ground, he he or his if his if he's in the same place, he needs to be the the Y values need to be zero. And you're going in and out of squash and stretch there as well. So I would, yeah. Anyways, yeah, there's there's a lot of work. I mean, overall the animation's coming along, but yeah, you need to make fix all the, the swimming. And I'm just, I keep confusing myself because I'm we're not supposed to be animating this and we definitely don't want to animate the scale on this. So anyways, yeah, see if, see if that can, if you need me to, like I've been saying to everybody, if you need me to meet with you after class to, Help you kind of clean this up a little bit better. Um, I'm willing to do that. Just let me know when you're available and we can set up a Zoom meeting. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see, where are we at? I think we got through everyone that didn't get a critique last week or last Tuesday. Um, Joe, did you want to show us your latest stuff? I want to make sure everyone's in good shape with spline because I'm finding a lot of issues that I was not expecting. Let's see. Got a chat message. It says, could I screen share? Yeah, Damien, um, to get a critique of my critique progress so far, hard to tell what makes it look off when it's so slight. Yeah, good point. Okay, so let's go. So you already have yours in there, Damien, your latest Maya file? Oh, no, not yet, but I can um, put it in there. Okay. In the... Let's see if I can, okay, there we go. Okay. So here's the animation so far. Hops, there we go. Good, yeah. So this is this is kind of what I was talking about with the character. He he's not sliding. The only time he's he's floating is when he's up in the air. 
the tail is kind of floating around because it's it's not dragging on the ground but there's a very intentional place where he sticks to the ground a couple places right there right there and then right here so you want to find those places in your animation to make sure that it feels like he's like physics is actually working on him there's gravity and there's weight to this character he's not just in water or air that's one mean viewer all right um good and even the the it looks like it some of it is in spline and some of it is not and if we zoom in here you can see that um Oh, maybe we haven't gotten to that part yet. So the tail should still be moving. Um, but maybe the body doesn't have to move. The, the body can stand stuck there until he gets violently pushed out. Um, and I'll drag over here. And as he turns to look at the camera, you can see that the top of the tail drags later than the rest of the tail, which is nice. That's what we're looking for, that just subtle overlapping action. And then eventually it catches up. Uh, I think you can try to try it if, if you can find places to do that more where the tail, and this isn't just for um, Damien, uh, I want everyone to see where they can find more opportunities to have the the end of the tail drag later, get to it the place where the rest of the tail is uh, later in more oper um, more places on your animation. Um, let's see if I zoom out a little bit more. Yeah, like right here is a good spot where you can have it delayed a little bit more. Um, and I don't remember, I don't think I showed anyone in this class yet. I was uh, in the morning class, I was showing this. So there's a little trick to this. You have one, let me see. One, two, three. Yeah, so you have three frames between your poses there and then one, two, three, four. Actually, I think I'm gonna play with, you have more space here. One, two, three, four, five, okay. So, um, Starting I'm going to start at five. I'm going to take these frames. Oh, I'm sorry, not everything, just the end tail, just the end of the tail. I'm going to take these frames and I'm going to I'm going to use this extra space that we have to kind of overlap the action. So I'm going to drag them three frames earlier. I'm sorry, three frames later. One two actually i'll just drag it one frame for now one oh shoot i have the looks like i have the let me select nothing like the ground is turned on or something i don't know what the ground is doing okay i'm going to put that on a layer so i can't select it accidentally and same thing with this So they're restricted. Now I'm not gonna accidentally select. Oh, there's another object I need to add to this. I've selected, okay. Um, and just a quick note on that ground. Um, it's in a very clear box. You can see a corner there. Um, I would extend the ground plane. So we just see a horizon line. We don't see this, this drop off right here. Anyways, that's just a small thing, but so I grabbed this and I delayed it, I think just one frame. Um, maybe I'll actually go, yeah, I'll just start with one and then I'm gonna grab this guy and this guy and drag them two frames. Uh, I need to keep track of where that was. I think it's actually a little bit further down here. Just to make sure though. One, two, three, four. Uh, is that it? 
well, I'll just say that I think it was 25, except it's still going, so maybe it's not 25. Let me, let me undo that for a second, because I need to make sure that I, I have this correct. I'm going to drag it one frame earlier. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's actually better. So I'm going to take all these and drag it one frame later. Grab the next control. And make that selection and drag those one frame later. And then that's happening around 38 or so. Um, I'm going to grab the next control. And I'm still selecting the, the previous controls. So I grab all these guys, and I'm going to drag that one frame later. And then finally, the top control, the, the base of the tail, and drag its movements one frame later. And one frame not, might not be enough. Um, we'll see. Um, let me see if I can position my squirrel better, or my fox. Uh, you don't really see it. If you do two or three frames later, you'll get this nice delay. Um, so I, I didn't change it enough. So you don't really see it as much as I was hoping. But it'll it'll create a nice overlap for you. And then this last one. Maybe that'll, yeah, you can start to see it happening there. The end of the tail is, um, and it's not really clean. It should be, it should be a lot cleaner than it is. Um, but this is more what I'm looking for where the, the end of the tail is, is slowly, or it's just delayed. And I may need to go through back here and and kind of clean up some of the the base of the tail's movement because it seems like there's a couple little pops. I don't know if that's a rotate. Let's see if I delete that and it. Let's see if that'll fix it. Yeah, that's that that was part of it, and maybe even. Yeah, so there's just, and you can go. You probably need to go through and, and just do like I'm doing. Just go through and. This probably needs to go away also. And that should start to make it feel a little bit more fluid. Um, rotate X. I'm pretty sure it's the same one on every control. Let's see what that looks like without those positions. Yeah, it is a little bit cleaner. And then he has a big anticipation and he so the one thing that I, I, I would also have you do is um, when we're watching those Fox videos um, when he jumps the tail kind of does its own thing but it's just the tip of the I'm sorry just the base of the tail not the whole tail and you kind of get stuck up here in this, um, I'm calling this concave position. Um, but maybe that was because of my delay. I'm not sure. Do you remember if it was before I did all that, if it was coming out of that through the through the jump? Uh, I'll look through my mind since I have it open. Um, OK. Yeah, I might, that might that might have been my fault because I moved stuff down. Maybe I moved it too far down. Um, but yeah, so even even with that though, you can see there's a nice the the tail kind of unravels here. That's actually really nice overlapping action. And then he hits, and it kind of flops around. But here's another spot here. Where the instead of just having the tail go from this pose to this pose, have the end of the tail delay. So like I just do the same thing I was doing, maybe only two frames instead of three or four. 
but you would just drag these guys two frames later and then both of these two frames later. And let's see if just in doing that, yeah, that makes a slight change just to make it get there later. And I think you can even do it a little bit more. Yeah. But yeah, you don't want to really do those changes until your animation is in pretty good shape, which this one is in pretty good shape. Um, it's fairly clean. Did you put a blur on it? Is there a like a motion blur? Is yeah, I was mind? one. I think that's your computer. I was about to ask like how your compute, how there's like a blur on yours. Cause yeah, I mine's didn't not do that. Blurring. Um, I'm just going to check something real quick because that shouldn't be on. Um, I actually have to go to rendering. And under settings. I don't think I hit a it's the motion blur. Yeah, it's off. So it's it's not the motion blur setting. And we're not even rendering. Um, you normally only see that when you're rendering. I don't know why it's doing that. There's some glitch in Maya, I guess. Um, oh, but what I was trying to look at was the the, the squash and stretch, because it seems like most of the students are really having an issue with that. So yeah, even here, you can see that there's a little bit of, let me go to the side view. So he leaves the ground before he's stretched. And as he's moving through the air, he's stretching. And then he squashes. So in this position, when he's at the top of the crest, that needs to be back at default. And then when he's he's contacts the ground, or he's still in contact, maybe I'll have this happen just a little bit sooner to just give us enough frames to do this. Um, I'm going to key it at four as my squash. And then at five, I'm going to stretch it. And then he leaves the ground. And maybe he's not jumping that far, so maybe the stretch is a little bit too exaggerated. Maybe that's too far, too. So it's just a, a little squash and stretch. And again, here, same thing. Before he can touch the ground in a squash, he has to touch the ground in a stretch. So I'm going to maintain that squash value. And I'm going to turn that original squash value into a stretch. And then I'm going to flatten this so it gradually goes from squash to stretch. but on these, I'm going to ch change those to linear so they pop more. Yeah. And then the same thing, just keep doing that with each squash and stretch. And I think it'll clean up pretty quickly. Nice big squash, big anticipation. Yeah, same thing here. He leaves the ground before his body has started stretching, which is... Um, Pretty hard to do. <laughs> and then he hits. And he seems like he hits kind of softly. Maybe you can have him impact a little bit harder. Um, and those videos, most of them, I mean, they're pretty much, I think most of them were in slow motion. Um, let me actually look at the translate Y real quick. So this is a, a, another quick issue to, to resolve. He goes, um, It takes him fewer frames, one, two, three, four frames to go up, but it takes him one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames to go down. So the easy fix is just find the middle. And maybe you probably need to use the all button to move everything. Um, move all these down a, a few frames. Maybe I'll, leave, I'll release some of these. And now I'm going to go back to the translate Y. Yeah, that, that's, that's more of an even arc. 
Um, and he he goes down lower because he's going through the snow. He's actually, you know, penetrating through the ground. So that's okay. Uh, I would flatten the top and make these more linear. So he's going to impact with a little bit more pop. Yeah. And maybe even he drops even lower. I don't know. I'll let you figure that out. But um, yeah, good. OK, do you have any questions? Uh, nope, I'm good. Thanks. All right, thank you. That was Damien. OK. How about Luke? Where are you at, Luke? Or did we get the Joe? Did did Joe? You already show yours? I can't remember. Ooh, like today or before? I showed mine uh, today. Last class. I haven't really done. Yeah, I haven't done much between the two classes. I mean, if you still want to see it, I've just been like working like on very slight things with the tail. I haven't had much time to work on it lately. Uh, do you still want me to share it though? And this is Luke, right? Yes, this is Luke. Sorry. Um. Well, if you haven't really done any prog made much progress, let's not. Because I want to make sure that um, people can get feedback that they haven't already yeah. gotten. So yeah, okay. Cool. Go ahead and see I, if you I can make more progress. The class, if... Yeah, yeah. We'll shoot for oh, the end of that? class. We'll shoot for the end of class on yours. All right, cool. Thanks. Yeah, we'll see that. Um, how about Jocelyn? Have I don't remember. I don't think you've shown yours today. Um, no, I didn't. But I didn't really get that much progress done either. I was okay. still trying to like figure out, and I. Yeah. So what are the main issues you're having with? Um, it's just um, having to, basically what you did um, the last last class, just like having to, because um, I worked backwards. I like, oh, I had an spine and I had to yeah. work backwards. Okay. But um, I think I'm getting it. So okay. I think... All right, if you run into any troubles, let me know. We can. Um... Look at yours. Hunter, okay. how about yours? Where are you at, Hunter? Ready to show yours? Um, yeah, I completely finished the tail section. I've just been like working on little things the whole time. So okay. it's pretty much done if you want to look at it. Yeah, great. Let's have a look. So it's tail 09, right? That's the latest yes. one? Okay. I'm gonna clean. I'm gonna need to clean up my download folder today because it's got every student's, just about every student's Maya file in there. Oh, this is the one that flips around like the dog, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, and I'm looking for a camera. There it is. Okay, so that'll be my. Went through selected. Okay. Turn this off. And just so it's not distracting, I'm going to turn off the grid also. So we're just seeing the geometry. Okay. Select in the, let's see, rig, big, yeah, those are restricted. Select objects. Okay. So it's, for the most part, it's all splined out. <laughs> nice. Okay, let's pause this. Let me give me more space. Outliner. Okay. Yeah, so the, the end of the tail is definitely delayed from the rest of the tail, which is nice. <laughs> There's definite spots where the character is holding um, its position on the ground, where it's not floating. Um, there's a lot of personality in it, even without a face, and a nice spin around at the end. Yeah, yeah, it's in really good shape. Um, trying to see if there's anything I would 
recommend to work on the, the squash and stretch seems to be working well. Um, I like the timing of it too. It's very snappy. Yeah, that's in, that's in really good shape. I, I don't really have any feedback to, uh, I mean, I guess if I frame by frame it, I could probably find a couple of things, but overall it's in really good shape. I think, so I have my tail, like if you see tail and then body controls, because when I put them on different ones, mm -hmm. so that'll be the two main ones. So oh, I see. Fine for that too. Okay. Yeah, they were, actually, they weren't working when I had. So I had the tail one because I wanted to be able to select just the tail, and mm -hmm. then I had the body one, which had all of them. But when I put the tail one in the body one, it didn't work. Yeah. Uh, it didn't. Yeah, whatever works for you. Tail. So. Yeah, and this is actually you can. These are really nice little arcs. You can see that it's it's very clear to understand what's happening in the animation just by looking at the graph editor. This is the big. So I'm, I selected the main control and you can almost, it's, it's, it's almost like you can interpret the animation of the character without seeing it just by the graph editor. Cause it's pretty clean. There's a big old arc here and there, here's a little loop around right there. That's crazy. It looks like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, let me see. I don't know if this is going to make a huge difference in the movement, um, but especially right here where it's it's flowing through the air, you might want to just uh, spline tangent this. And if it doesn't make any difference, no big deal. That's probably just my OCD talking because that doesn't look clean as an arc. But as long as the movement isn't any different, um, you can get away with it. Okay. Um, let me see. Let me actually look at your squash and stretch because that seems to be the area where most people are having trouble. Um, so you are kind of leaving the ground without stretching. Uh, let me see. That's one, two, three. You have three frames. I wonder if, well, let me see. Arcs, it's a flat. Yeah, you don't really have enough to, but you're, you're, you're actually still in the air. Never mind. Hold on. You're in the air until right there. So I would make that a linear. Um, So yeah, I would go through and like I've been telling most people, um, find the places where your ball is leaving the ground and it's squashing and then it it's gonna stretch and it's still contacting the ground. And that's just a, a single frame between those two. Um, so like, I, like I've been doing, I'm actually gonna steal from here um, and make this in my squash. And then make this in my stretch. And I'm not really paying attention to how big it is. I'm just, actually, these are small, so I should make it a little bit smaller, a little bit less dramatic. And see, that's that's physics. And I don't know if he's, maybe if he's up there at the top of his arc, he's, he's still kind of squashing and stretching like he's giddy or something. But um, other, otherwise, I would bring it back to the, uh, default position. Let's see. That's uh, I'm going to actually delete this one and move this one earlier. And that. Yeah, th so there's just a single frame here. So that actually could work if you just drop it down so it's contacting the ground on this frame.
And it's just very slight, but that little difference is gonna make it feel even um, more, um, more believable. So yeah, that's that's about the only thing I would say is just go through and, and make sure that your squash and stretch have um, a squash immediately followed by a stretch. And then as it returns, um, a stretch followed by a squash. Okay. Good. All right, where are we at? Uh, that was Hunter, right? Yeah. Um, any other comments? Luke. Lana, are you ready to show anything? Well, I made some adjustments, but I'm not sure they're like I wouldn't say they're a big change, but okay. they're they're there. Okay. Um let's see. Uh, Juliana. I think that's everyone then. Oh, Allison, um, do you want to show what uh, you were talking about, Allison, from your email? You want me to yeah. look at yours next? Yeah. Oh, did I get my mic working? Yeah, it works now. I can hear you. Yay. Um, yeah, so I, I kind of like read it a lot. So I have this stepped version like updated there. Um, okay. So yeah, if you could look at it and give some feedback that would be great <laughs> definitely yeah let me uh open this up okay um Layouts, three panes to the top. Graph editor. Camera. I'll leave this in the side view for now. And then, yeah, let's go. I'm going to put your um, props on a layer so that, and I would encourage you to do the same so you can restrict them and not select them on accident like I keep doing. There we go. Um, Select objects. Uh, let's see if I go back to zero. So I'm at the zero frame, but I don't see anything keyed. So you're gonna start with that. You're gonna key, hit S. And also um, in that pose, oh, let me turn these off first and then turn them on over here. Um, so yeah, like I've been showing everybody, um, uh oh, I see the same issue that you're having. So you have, maybe it's just this rig that's not reliable. I don't know. Yeah. I, I also had that duplicate, but I've noticed that like it has nothing connected to it. So I just deleted it. Okay, good. Yeah. That one does work. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm just zeroing everything out. At the at the um, safety frame, and I, uh, let's see, that's the translate. Yeah, I'll zero this one up. Oh, that's the that's a the triangle, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the all button, and I've keyed everything at zero. I need to key everything at one also, but. I'm going to move whatever. So you're at 5.533. Um, I'm going to hit S to key everything there, but I'm going to drag or change this to frame one. That's going to be your new frame one. Um, and you can see you have this at 10.53. Yeah, I don't know why they kept going to that instead of like a whole number. Yeah. I, I didn't really get it. I'm not sure either. I would just go through and um, force it to a, a, a whole number. Okay. So I'm just gonna say 19 or 20 here. Um, the other one, actually I need to also hit S. Oh, before okay. I do that one though, I need to hit S on 10. I didn't, I don't know if there was a big change from, was that intentional, this little shift? Um. At frame 10? 
I I don't think so. Okay, I'm just gonna delete it then. And then a 20 hit S. Um, so 33, there's a another shift. The tail's not moving. I mean, it, it's just it's moving because it's connected to the body, but it doesn't have its own independent pose. Was that intentional? Um, I don't know, because I have it like start to tilt its head down at some point, but. Yeah, that looks like a head tilt, like you're intending yeah. for a head tilt. So I'm going to go ahead and key that as a key pose. Okay. Um, and then at, well, so I'm going to also find a good value for a, a good whole number. So I'm going to say 33. Okay. And now it's at a whole number. Um, so on frame 33, you want to find a good pose for the tail, not just the rotation of the body, but also the, the tail. Um, okay. And there's, I don't see any change. Well, there is slightly. It's very, very subtle. So this probably wasn't intentional, right? Um, yeah, probably not. Okay, I want to delete that. And then this is an intentional, it looks like an intentional squash. I think. Yeah. Okay. So I'll key that. So again, it's really important to recognize that I have everything selected and I'm hitting S to key everything. Even though I'm not changing any of the animation poses yet, I'm just keying everything at those key storytelling poses. This is okay. 36.63. It's closer to 37. So I'm going to round up. Um, he's up in the air. And yeah, you can see here, the tail is just following the body. It's not really dragging behind it. It's just frozen in space. Okay. So just find a good pose for the tail. And like I've been showing people, um, the easiest way to work with the tail, especially like in this pose, to get uh, a very quick, decent shape is just select all four of the controls at once. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute. Let me see what I'm, I may not be on a, yeah, so that's that's on a, that's going to be at the top of your crest. I'm going to go ahead and hit S. Um, so I key, every, oh yeah, I keyed everything. And then I'm going to drag this down to, or maybe drag it forward to, um, I want it to be a 40, a whole number, 43. Uh, maybe if I deselect the main control, I don't know. Anyways, I keyed it. So, um, Let's see, maybe if I individually select these, it'll let me move them together. Yeah, okay. So I select these, I'll just drag it, whatever. There we go. No, that's 42.99, dang it. Okay, it's a 42, that's better, either one. Um, and then for the tail, I'm gonna select those individually mm -hmm. and zero their rotational values and then rotate them all together. So, okay. and something I haven't explained about using all three of them or all four of the rotations together. Um, and this is really useful for the human spine as well. When you have a human rig, as, as I'm doing this, um, I don't know if it's obvious, but the top is, because of it, uh, the position where it is in relation to the bottom, it it's actually, it looks like it's rotating more than the bottom because it's adding what it did just before that and then the one before that. So even though the bottom is only moving a little bit, the the next joint up is moving its own value plus the value of the, the bottom one. So then okay. you get this, you get this nice shape that feels like a, like a, a an organic shape and you can use you can it doesn't have to be organic shapes but just by by moving the joints like this the controls like this it feels it has a more organic feel okay. um uh so yeah that's a new pose i don't remember if i changed the top yeah 42 and 42. Okay, so that's your key pose. Well, I'm not actually at 42. <laughs> yeah, you can see my tail is at some other value. Okay, so I'm going to grab those again, because this is some other minute fraction. And I'm going to see, 
Maybe I'll just do them one at a time. I don't know. I hate to have to do that, but. It should just let me change it in here, but it's not. Um, hmm. Yeah, I, I, I wish I had the right answer for you. Why it had you on all these odd numbers instead of, or they're not odd. Yeah, actually now it's, Forty-one. That's just a tail. Oh, that's because I don't have the the main controls and the squash and stretch. No, it looks like it cleaned itself up. I don't know what I did differently, but now it's not at some minute fraction. It's actually at forty-two. Okay. Forty-three. I don't know what's at forty-three. I don't see anything keyed there. Um. No, it still is there. Darn it. I don't know. Um. We gotta fix that though, because that's gonna show up in your animation. Yeah. Um, maybe just one at a time again. What 41? I'm gonna say 42. Is it one at a time this way? That's 42. Okay. That's 42. That's 42, 42, 42, 42. I guess that's what you need to do is just click on these individually and make sure that they're actually at 42 and not some other number. Okay. Yeah, that one's not correct. So, oh, and you can actually see here, I'm really scaling in. If I delete this one, no, I, I deleted the wrong one. I delete this one. Which one is it? Well, I'm going to move one of these off if it lets me. So I selected the, the top one. 41, 42. And there's still something at 42. Jeez. I don't see where it's at, though. I'm going to force this if it lets me. Oh, man, so irritating. This one's only keyed at that strange value. And we can't even scale that anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, all button. Yeah, so like I said, just go through and make sure that you're not on any whole, uh, anything other than whole numbers. Um, anyway, so back to animation. Um, I think this little rodent or whatever getting away from him is just maybe the timing needs to change so it it, um, it happens. Yeah, I'm starting to think that I think I put the fox in step mode, but I think I accidentally put the rodent guy oh. in spline. So yeah, that, that would make sense why it's yeah it's it is in spline. You're right. Now that I see it. Um, So he's shaking back and forth like he's he's trying to break its neck or something or um no I uh I I just realized that I should have added like a little donut thing for like, like the snow. Oh, but so like, he needs he's like shaking off the snow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um the tail wag right there. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably a little bit too fast. Okay. 
especially because it happens at the same speed as his um well it, it feels actually even faster than his head i don't know if it is but i would slow that down a little bit okay um and just make sure that the tail doesn't clip through the ground um where is it there's a couple of places like right there at frame i don't know when it starts but like 88 or so okay. and like i've been telling you make sure that your tail is the end of your tail is delayed more than your the base of the tail and then the base of the tail at some point needs to have been delayed more than the body so you get some nice overlapping action and then also look for those places where you can um squash the character and then stretch him and he's still in contact with the ground and then he's up in the air and then he's stretched before he contacts or he's he's stretched in his contact position where when i say contact position his nose or his his the bottom is just touching the ground for the first time after the jump and then you go into a squash Yeah, so from here to here, you see the tail just kind of hooks into the ground. Yeah, that's that. That would be a really nice place to have the tail fall behind, uh, on top, like behind his head as it as he's rolling forward. The tail is still up here, okay. and then finally it settles down. Yeah. Anything? Uh, do you have any questions or? Not really. <laughs> okay. Uh, very good. Thank you. Did I stop recording? I see David says, don't forget to record. Uh, let's see, I thought I was still recording. It says, uh, no, I'm still recording. I'm good. Thanks, David. Um, Beck, oh, that was a long time ago. Sorry, I'm looking at old comments. Um, Motion blur on. Yeah, we talked about that already. Okay. So who hasn't, who haven't I seen today? I know Luke, you said um, you hadn't made any real changes. Lana, same thing. Never saw uh, me. I haven't seen Jay, uh, Joe yet. Yeah, I haven't added much though. I tried to fix the tail, like make it go up and down, but it ended up just kind of looking ugly. <laughs> okay, well, let's see if we can help you fix that then. And you already put it in there? Uh, no, I didn't put it in or anything. Honestly, okay. I didn't think it was worth being shown because honestly, the thing was nothing changed by the looks of it. Like, okay. Yep, I can see it. Okay. So, play it again. So, I think it was at the end, like right here, that you said it should be moving up and down. Oh, the tail. Yeah, the tail, sorry. Yeah. Just because it's only moving back and forth. And... Mm -hmm. so, so is he is is his body rotating side to side as he's jumping up and down? Um, I don't think so. I think he's just jumping up and down. I thought about making him move side to side, honestly. But I was worrying about well, the tail first. Let's do this. Um, keep the position that you have with the tail. The, mm -hmm. the left and right rotation but just add to it when he goes um go ahead and pause it on on one of those frames oopsie so yeah like right yeah like right there for example if his body's up and his tail is to the right i think all you should have to do is grab the have all the the rotations or all the tro the tail control selected at once and rotate them together mm -hmm. so that it's um, like the blue axis, the blue, ro yeah, the Z axis, rotate them that way. Yep. This way? No, the other way. Other way. Okay. I'll yeah. Because if, if he's going up, the end of the tail has to be going down. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, and, yeah, then, yeah. and then when he comes down, then you'll rotate the other way so that they're pointing up. And mm -hmm. just keep doing that. So when he's up, the tail is still going left and right, but it's more 
also pointing either down or up depending on it's countering what he's doing that's that, so that's you should still be able to get overlapping action up and down as well as doing left and right okay yeah that makes sense yeah i can definitely do that i think that will help okay yeah yeah see if that works and let me know if it doesn't we'll play with some other ideas sure yeah okay uh that's about the only issue i think i was having okay. everything else just smoothing it out and stuff wow you got a lot of frames so oh, did, oh, I know. did you do a lot of uh, straight ahead or were, it was just a lot of the tail movement or uh this one's just the tail yeah oh that's right you have just the tail yeah so if you selected the all button what does it look like select the all. like you're with from your uh yeah there you go it should select all i don't know why it's not it usually does it's... Huh. Actually, it looks like it is. I, it seems like hmm. everything's highlighted. Oh, but I, we're not actually looking at the graph editor either. We're looking at the timeline. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The... So if you Sorry, just, this is yeah, the first time it. I've been on my laptop with Maya, so uh, my panels are messed up, I think. Yeah, go to layouts. Yeah, there you go. Two pane, three, three pane split top. Sorry, three pane oh, split top. I clicked the wrong one. Uh, I, I told you the wrong one. <laughs> I don't know why I said two panes, three panes. There you go. Uh, okay. So do you feel, um, you know, once you get the tail working up and down as well as side to side, do you feel like you're in pretty good shape to start working with spline tools? Uh, yeah, I think so. Once I, yeah, once I fix that tail part, I think. Okay. So. And uh, I just want to remind you, don't be afraid of deleting frames that you've keyed because you spent a lot of time getting the movement to look the way you want it to. Mm -hmm. But a lot of those frames that you've keyed, a lot of the in-betweens, and this is a big difference between 3D animation and 2D. Um, a lot of what you've done to, to get to this point may be obsolete. Mm -hmm. And you can, yeah. you can use it, especially your keys and breakdowns, as... Um, transit as, as starting points and then you use the, the the spline tools in the graph editor to clean that up so a lot of those those keys will go away um just just so you know so you don't feel like you're i mean essentially you are undoing some of your work but it's getting better as you're undoing it mm -hmm. yeah no i get that okay good yeah no i that's what by me All right. Um, yeah, if that's the only question you have, then um, thank mm -hmm. you. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Anna, or I'm sorry, Lana or uh, Luke, did you want to show anything yet? We have about 10 minutes left in class. Uh, yeah, I was I was typing this out in the chat, but I can just say it. Um, I, I can share mine. I've only made some slight changes to like the tail. They're very slight, but do you still want to see it that way? Yeah. Oh, wait, should, we, uh, should we screen share it then? Uh, yeah, let's do that. Since we're kind of short on time. Yeah, go ahead and right, screen share. Work out. That. Here we go. Oh, I also I added a ground plane, but I haven't really like made the uh, adjustments for it yet. If I mean, like I wasn't sure if like anything was like going through it or not. So if that if that's happening, I, I apologize, I guess. But I got my play okay. button back. This is how it looks. So. I'll turn this up. Yeah, I like that subtle nudge. He doesn't actually nudge it, but he gets close, like he's smelling it. That's that's a nice yeah. addition. Oh, and the ending, the ending, I, I'll move the tail a bit more too. There are just like slightly, just haven't done that yet. <laughs> yeah. No, that we're not. I know we're supposed to like do the body and the tail at the same time. That was like the one part that I was just like just trying to get the body moving. I wasn't sure how I wanted it to look, so I was yeah. just like playing around with it for a bit. I mean, yeah, but it's, it's do anything. That, that's that's a nice little touch at the end. Um, and like you already know, you already know about the tail. So yeah, it's it's coming along. Yeah, just finish it up. And uh, if you have any issues dealing with spline, just let me know, mm -hmm. and we can screen share and uh, figure out what 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 issues you might have. You might Thank be having. You, yeah, and I think this is just like unrelated but i was noticing it. i think my tail rig might have also been slightly messed up i think you can see it more over here um mm -hmm. i just noticed that once it starts to play there's these two that get left over here although it doesn't seem to be like messing anything up you see that one right yeah. there it's just one 
is dancing around. Um, mm -hmm. I just figured I'd mention that because I think that was like a consistent issue today. So yeah. I like, thought that was funny. Yeah, go ahead and delete it and see if it, it shouldn't change anything. Uh, and if it, uh, if it does, just undo that delete and then just, you know, ignore it. <laughs> and make sure you only have that one selected, not the main control at the bottom. Yeah, we got it. Let's there you go. Is it? Yeah, I mean, it looks the same. <laughs> yeah, right. good. Okay. That's all. It should be good. Very good. So we actually still have time for Lana. Thank you. No problem. Uh, Luke. Lana, did you want to show anything before the end of class? Well, I did put like a new play blast. There are just slight changes, really. Yeah. OK. Um, yeah, I'll screen share, and we can look at those changes that you made. Uh, play blast. And you guys are seeing my screen, right? It's the, the third one that says version three. Version three, OK. All right, I'll maximize this and set it to. Oh, that's right. You have the, um, he dives into the foliage or whatever. Yeah, I like that it's darker. Um, it's, let's see. So he goes in there, comes back out. You, I'm not looking at your graph editor, but I'm willing to bet that he goes up. It takes him longer to get up than it does to come down. Um, and I don't know if you could steal some frames on the front end or on the back end, but have him make sure that when he goes up, it's the same amount of time to come down. Like, like slow down before the fall. Yeah, uh, let me see if I can actually frame through it. And also, like I've been telling everybody, make sure that there's a stretch just following the um, squash. Actually, I don't think he does. He, he's already squashed, I guess, in anticipation. Yeah, but there's no stretch to get him off the ground. So up here, let me see how many frames it takes. One, two, oh, let me see. Try to do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so he's starting to fall there. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Actually, no. I thought it took him longer to get up, but it's actually, for some reason, that really tricked my eye because it looks like he's falling faster. Maybe it's not the timing, maybe it's the distance. Let me let me scrub through that again. Maybe it could the arc. Be the distance. Maybe he travels more in the front end, and he kind of comes down more straight. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Just make sure the distance is also the same. If he if he takes if it if he moves two units forward to get up to that uh, arc, he needs to have the same number of units to come down. Okay. Yeah. Can I write that down? Um, so the only part that feels a little bit swimmy to me, the timing on the first part is pretty good. When he jumps back out of the um, bush, like this, this doesn't feel swimmy. And then just right here, it, right there, the very end part, his tail is going up and he's kind of sliding forward, kind of. Um, I would keep them in the same position. The, it looks like you're moving the, the the main control, and I wouldn't I wouldn't move that. You can still have them maybe squash and stretch a little bit or rotate, but I wouldn't move him. Like right there is really nice. He's looking left and right, and you might be moving it, but I can't really tell because you're rotating and squashing at the same time. But on the on the other end, right here, he's just kind of sliding without squashing or stretching. So I would move him less and translate and rotate, or tra I'm sorry, translate less and rotate and squash a little bit more at the end right here. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
And then also that tail, yeah, you can try to delay the tail a little bit more at the end, the, the tip of it. So it, it, it is just slightly de delayed, but have a delay even more. Like that right there is really nice. This delay is really good. It feels really late, which makes it really feel overlapped. And you you were working mostly, you're already working through, I mean, this is, um, it looks like you're pretty comfortable working in spline, right? I'm getting used to it. Okay, good. All right, guys. Thank you, Lana. Um, you're welcome. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and um, pause the video or stop the video.